Costs avoided, projects avoided. Mm -hmm. One big a, project instead of smaller ones. That is, a, this is actually, these are not equal solutions. This is a, more of a benefit of the Badger Cooley project as opposed to just standing on its own. Uh, it would be, it's a lower voltage kind of analysis. There's a whole presentation that's cycling through. It's the same information as is here. Uh, right. But it's got some good information in it. Uh, Thank you. I'm not a transmission planner. Uh, Dale right there is, if you did have any more in-depth questions about that, he is extremely knowledgeable about the needs and benefits of the project as well as uh, analyzing lower voltage options. I can answer any real high-level questions that you have, but if you do have any, he's actually available right now. Um, so the comparison of one big line to smaller lines, is that what this is about right here? Projects avoided? Um, if we take a look at um, what we did is we came up with what I call a low voltage alternative. And so it's not necessarily a one for one comparison. What we did is we said, well, what if we, uh, what if we don't build this line at all? What deficiencies are we gonna see in the system? And that's where we, we have all these, these projects. And it, it adds up to, in total, like $180 million worth of projects. That would oh, be, these are a bunch of small projects that would have yeah, to be addressed if you didn't do the big one? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, and in addition to that, these small projects then, don't provide all the benefits that the 345 KV line does. It doesn't increase our access to wind. It doesn't, um, you know, get us better access to cheaper energy. It basically just kind of um, allows the system to remain reliable, which is which is our primary goal is to maintain reliability. To make sure the so if on. the big one wasn't done, you'd need to do these small ones just for reliability. Just to keep the lights on. Correct. Right. Right. And the reason we want to do the big one is a combination to keep the lights on and to save people money on their electric on their energy. And what about them canceling all the wind projects for Wisconsin itself? I mean, this is for wind out west to bring it Correct. east. Correct. Um, actually, the, the, the more strict um, you know, measures that have been placed on wind developers within Wisconsin actually increase the value of this line because if those wind projects aren't built inside the state, something's going to have to be built outside the state and we're going to rely on this line even more. Well, shouldn't some of the work then be to have wind projects in Wisconsin and get rid of those restrictions? Um, that's a, that's, that's a, outside your and purview it's a, here. It's a policy issue and um, I wouldn't disagree with you, but it's not something we've got any control over. That part's out of your control because that's... And what but we do is building we, the power line yes. has all kinds of implications, and that is within your... Sure. Okay, thank you. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, um, you know the, the question of developing wind within the state is certainly within the Wisconsin Public Service Commission's purview. You know, so along with this, this line, this project and stuff, um, you know, comments about, you know, more wind development within Wisconsin or that's fair game. Thank you. opposite works. The more interconnected you are, the more you can burn. But there's such a big impact. Yeah, it's a terrible impact. Is this about this issue? Fish and wildlife wants them to stay at the same project. They want them to go on to the I can sort of explain to you what our... Well, is there some more information on this? Protecting the environment? I mean... I'll give you these, um, but basically what we're doing now, I mean, we're sort of early in the process. Our job right now is to make sure environmentally sensitive areas are identified. 
I don't remember. So that they can be considered in the routing and siting process. Oh, now, uh, environmentally insensitive areas for the routing of the power line. Right. But nothing about the, the block on doing wind power in Wisconsin itself, so you don't need the power line. You know, because recently they put a big block on doing wind power in Wisconsin. Well, one of the benefits of this line is connecting to wind power in, to the west. Well, thank you. So in Minnesota. Right, but here's a huge environmental impact of having this power line through Wisconsin. How about reversing the recent decision by the Walker administration to block wind power in Wisconsin so you don't need the power line? I mean... Yeah, you know, we just have to sort of deal with the process that, that we have. Um, I mean... No, but that's a big, big point, right? Well, it's not a point that, you know... I'm really up on, and, and, and you know, I don't really know how that would impact this project. I can just sort of explain to you, you know, our process and what we're doing. Yeah, but this is a big policy decision. And then there's all these alternatives of not having... Well, from, from ATC's standpoint, any generator, whether it's a wind farm, whether it's a coal burning plant, we can't discriminate. So, I don't believe that we can really get involved in, in you know, the, the politics of whether or not wind farms are being banned. If someone, if some, a generator, any generator, hydro plant, gets into the queue, um, you know, as a company, we can't really say, well, you know, we'd rather, we'd rather see a wind farm. But you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I see what it's a policy doing. decision to block wind power in Wisconsin, and then you need the power line. But if you didn't block the wind power in Wisconsin, you wouldn't necessarily need this power line coming from one side going through Wisconsin. Well, not necessarily. It, if, even if you had more wind power, they would, it would still need to be connected to the transmission line. Yeah, but if every place had local power being generated by wind, then you wouldn't need a big power line going from yeah. the west going to the east. And that, it, I understand that. A lot of, a lot of people have brought that up. That's, I think you might want to talk to planning about that. You know, I don't really... Planning, is that another that opinion? Planning is right there. They can talk to you about the need for the project. They've got, they, they're aware of studies done um, on wind power and, you know, future generation. So, I mean, really, our, our role is to identify, you know, the, the, the resources on the ground, like, you know, wetlands, streams, um, protected lands, public, public lands, um, important bird areas, those the cultural resources. Well, right, but, again, if you had local generation all over the place, you wouldn't need a big power line affecting all those nature areas, building the power line through it. Right. Thank you. Thank you for your time.